Hello, so I've been, I was on Facebook on the Retro Future, and uh, a few times I've posted that I've done uh, USB-C mods to things, and specifically with the DS Lite, because I do a lot of the macros, and uh, a lot of people always ask me how I do the USB-C mod to it, and I'm always like, well, here it is, this is what you do, this is what I usually buy, it's really easy, as long as you know how to solder. Uh, but I figured that maybe... For a change, after a few people have been asking me for videos, that I would attempt to make a video and uh, see how it goes because I haven't really done a video uh, like this or really like in person, I guess, demonstrating things. Um, I don't know how the audio is going to turn out, but I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I've added USB C into a lot of DS, uh, DS lights so far. I mainly do it for the, uh, for the macros. Um, trying and just adding it into them because I just I use these all the time for playing uh, advanced games and uh, I the one that I did on Facebook recently or yesterday and posted today I think uh, is this one which is my uh, Pokemon edition uh, <clears throat> since I had like three of them I finally decided to <laughs> do it to the one that I use the most but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it to this pink one this pink DS light because I already have to fix uh, the d-pad on it uh, but yeah so we'll try it uh, I'm gonna talk about the uh, USB-C mod for a second because I've seen it many times so far when people are like hey I want to do a mod for USB-C into my I you know one of my items and everyone's always like no that's a bad idea uh, and it really frustrates me because the only reason it's a bad idea and people are saying it's a bad idea is because uh, USB-C has uh, I don't, don't know the right wording but uh, people just don't really like it because it's universal port for a lot of different things and there's a lot of different chargers and cables that work with them or don't work with certain devices um, like laptops and and a lot of phones have high voltage chargers high volt you know high amp chargers or low volt high amp chargers because they're doing fast charging and whatnot for the big batteries and uh, while these devices are low voltage low amp um, takers like these I think are like five like uh, 5.2 volts in and one amp uh, they take that which is pretty much the standard uh, I guess computer USB port and a lot of the old chargers for like iPhones and other phones from the USB-C I mean USB uh, micro era and whatnot and those ones are super common I mean most people have like, at least for me like I, I carry around uh, my laptop all the time um, and, and you know I, I use the USB C's on these ones and on my my uh, Game Boy Colors and my Game Boy Advance because I can carry one cable and two base chargers so one charger for my for my MacBook and or one power supply for my MacBook and one power supply for all my other devices which is always about five volts one amp and a lot of these like higher end chargers like for MacBooks and switches and and a lot of the phones nowadays are uh, they have they, they the chargers themselves don't supply voltage, or at least from my understanding and reading about it, because I've tried to do you know make sure I do everything correct. Um, is that they have like a the chip that essentially says, hey, um, I want this amount of voltage supplied to me, this amount of voltage and this amount of amps, and a lot of the chargers won't supply it unless the device asks for it. And that's why you can use you know, a MacBook charger on a lot of different devices, like smart devices, or different MacBooks, or phones, and whatnot, and they all work together because they are smart, while these ones are not. So that's the biggest thing, is that you just need to be smart about what kind of supply you use, and you do get away with a lot of the time where it won't, like a higher-end one won't charge this. It just won't work. Um, and that's, you know, complaint. I know that's probably getting rambling by now, but we'll go ahead and uh, move on. You can... You could have skipped past that, I suppose, but uh, we'll just start off. So we'll start off by just taking it apart um, and kind of getting into detail as I go with it. <clears throat> so, you know, just standard taking apart. I suppose this can be used as a video for some that don't know how to take them apart by now, but I would hope, I really would hope that if you're, you know, doing this stuff, uh, or even looking into this that you've done you know some modding so far to DS lights or some repairs and or 
you know, to other devices. Um, I do this all the time, but it's all, all on camera is making it different. But, uh, oh, come on. Right. We'll get that pesky screw out later. Yeah, I've uh, been really into the USB-C a lot since it, I started getting a lot of the devices that use it because, you know, I, I got, I'm sure you can guess that I had a MacBook, I had a few other things like phones and some other devices that I've just switched over to USB-C. Um, <clears throat> and I just like the idea of the single cable. And really that's my uh, MacBook cable usually on trips or going to work. Um, since I take my laptop to work. Uh, and a lot of time, like, uh, you know, I have to carry some stuff, but, uh, it's whatever. But, uh, for, I'm sure you've seen it many times, but the, uh, that charger right there, it's actually about the same size as a normal USB-C or micro. Um. Its thickness is, you know, and width are about the same, which really works out. And uh, I'll go ahead and talk about the connectors that I use. But I bought these. Um, I originally bought them off of SparkFun when I was trying to find uh, stuff, and I read the schematics. And the grounding legs here are actually the correct size for uh, for these for adapting to this. It fits in right in the holes. It's a little bit of a snug fit on, I think the. Uh, with but it works out just great. Uh, you do have to kind of break off a piece over here from it because it sits too high with that on there. But you can just use your fingernail. It's not really that hard. Oops, I'm outside the camera, but it's just like right on the end. But the problem with these ones for a lot of people, and I'm sure I'm not gonna get it and focus that well, but they have tiny little legs, and that's gonna put off a lot of people from working on this. Um, it's honestly not the hardest thing to solder to. It's kind of like, you know, you put, you, you get your wire and you put some solder on it. Um, and then you kind of just tap it on and, uh, hopefully, you know, it will stick or you go at it a few times and it's not really like I use, oops, I need to put that on. It's not really like I use a really hot, I mean, a really thin solder, um, soldering iron tip. Um, so it's really not too bad. Uh, but essentially these have a lot of pins, they're, they're not as many as, you know, what USB-C actually does, because a lot of them are combined into one. But the main ones are the two outside ones um, on both sides. So the first one on both sides is ground, and the second one on both sides is positive. So essentially you do your red wire to the um, the second pin on both on either side, or the, and then the ground on the uh, first pin of either side. A lot of time I'll try and make them on, you know, both sides to kind of make sure they're further away from each other. Um, but we'll get into that more in a bit. We'll finish taking this one apart. I guess I could have done that rather than talk. off yeah you're gonna have to take part more probably than you really feel like taking apart for this but you gotta do it so that we can get the old part off port off and other whatnots but it's not too bad it's a little bit of pain but not too bad Set that aside. And with this mod, there's no shell mods at all. It's just changing out the ports. Um, which, like I said, is really easy as long as you have can get the wires on and you, know, you can do basic tasks of soldering outside of that <clears throat> and desoldering. The desoldering is probably going to be hard for a lot of people, but... Oop, wrong thing. But there we have it. Um, so the plan is we'll take this old port off and uh, 
I'm a, I usually try and save them when doing this, so I'm going to add a bit of solder to all of them and then use some, uh, I guess, soldering weight to take it off. Um, so that, you know, if I get a Game Boy that I want to fully restore rather than mod, I have an extra port if that's bad. Um, and then once we get the, we, we solder the wires to the connector and uh, we actually solder it to these two pins or these two pads just to make it easier. But uh, I got to wet this sponge and I'll be right back. I'm back. It's all wetted up and ready to start being used. Um, I'm probably not the best you know, person with their soldering iron compared to some. I've just kind of been doing this. I do, uh, before the these things, I've been doing drones for a couple of years now. So I've gotten pretty used to soldering uh, many different things. But uh, yeah, the solder is... For those that don't know, the solder is really old, and when the solder is old, it's just kind of crappy. So we just put a little bit of new solder on, and a lot of times these companies use like uh, I don't know, I think it's non-leaded solder, which is even worse I'm trying to deal with. So adding a bit of leaded solder is good. So yep, um, where's my solder? So I just do this. Hopefully it'll go well. If not, you can just clip off all the legs and be careful doing that because on one of the legs you have this small, I don't know what they are, a doctor or something like that there. And you can break it possibly. Which, trust me, it's a pain to replace because I've had to do it on a few whenever I've done some of my deeper mods. Like my uh, macro gamepad that I use for uh, playing Game Boy uh, and other emulators on my computer. But uh, I'll probably just skip through this part because it's pretty standard. Ah, God damn, hopefully I don't break something while trying to do this. If I can't make it survive, then I'm just going to pop it off. Cause I'm sure that's what a lot of people are going to do after watching this. But it's better to save parts because, like, I know some companies make parts for some of these retro devices, but at some point you're just not going to be able to get them. So the more you save, the better it is um, for yourself, for money-wise, and many other things. Oops. Man, hopefully I don't break something while doing this. I'm so nervous. I'm shaking. This one is always, one of these is always the pain. And you gotta watch, um, you're heating up the board while doing this. Oh, that one just fell right off. <laughs> you're heating up the board, and uh, if you put too much pressure, this thing's gonna start warping slightly. But there we go, we got the connector off. And uh, when you do this, you gotta make sure the holes are open because obviously we're gonna be putting a new connector in there. But I'll go ahead and show you like the test fit for it. But essentially you just pop it in in the new place. Um, there's a bit more that goes into it, but, you know, fits in just nicely. The solder on the legs and be done. Pretty much, uh, I mean, solder on the legs and wire that goes to it, but, um, I'll say one thing that I absolutely should do, must do, um, because I cannot imagine, uh, I mean, I can, can't imagine, but I can tell you that you're most likely going to short something if you don't do this, but just take a piece of Kapton tape. And uh, just put it right over the old port. Um, you want that because you're going to short something because the new port's slightly longer. And then you can just poke through the holes, this big hole for the screw thing, and uh, these smaller ones here. Yeah, you don't need to do those, but because you're going to put the legs through. Um, nothing too big. Uh, I have the uh, eh, piece of tape um, that we're going to use. I have a port that I messed up on, stuck to it, but uh, 
Yep, essentially we have, gotta put this, I'm, only, I'm using this to stick it down, but essentially we're gonna take a port, and we're just gonna solder the legs to it. Sorry about that, my uh, phone storage ran out, so I uh, had to switch to a different phone since that one <clears throat> I can't really record on. Um, so if the video is different, I apologize, but uh, yeah. Um, but as I was saying, it's really hard. Um, uh, but, but I don't really remember at this point, <laughs> so let's just continue. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to take my, uh, positive wire and, uh, I know the, the DS that I did last night is a bit easier putting on the board if I did them both on the same side, but it's kind of up to you. You just have to make sure the wire doesn't pop off whenever you're putting it on because the, uh, I'm going to just keep on calling it a conductor, conductor. <clears throat> but that conductor can kind of pop them off if they're on the left side. Uh, so I'm going to try and do more than both on the one side, so let's just go ahead and try it out. But essentially I just uh, take speaker wire from the DS lights <clears throat> and take off a bit of it. Um, and uh, I do that so that I can... What I try and do is I try and heat up near the back of it, um, of the uh, exposed wire, <clears throat> and uh, heat that up so then the uh, solder on the wire sticks to the uh, pins of the um of the uh connector so i'll just go ahead and go to the second one second pin on the uh um in from the outside on the, the right side of this and just kind of tap it and you can't really see it but uh it's on there i can kind of t <laughs> apparently i can't tug at it i guess i didn't get a good connection on there let's try that again Nope, ah, come on. Let's get a little bit more solder on that wire. So it might have come off. There we go. It's a bit of a pain. <clears throat> It'll probably take a few tries. Or tries. Uh, I still have a hard time, even though I've done a few of them now. Um, but, yep. Now we're just onto the uh, ground. You want a bit exposed wire so that you can once again heat it up. Um, I don't think I have enough there. Come on. Ugh, it's a little hard doing it with the soldering iron in the hand. There we go. Probably have to trim that down, but it'll work. Just to get some <clears throat> flux on, I mean, some solder on the wire. Now we can just clip off a little bit of it. Make it easier. Don't want too much solder on your soldering iron, else you're gonna probably make a big glob and bridge some con contacts. Alright, let's see here. Just gotta get it on just right. Gotta make sure I didn't bridge it. I'm just gonna <clears throat> take the multimeter to it real quick. Excuse the beeps that'll probably be uh, going off. Okay, my antenna sucks and doesn't always work. Seems like they're not bridged. Since they're both on the same side, I just wanted to be sure. Although, I definitely feel like that looks like it's bridged. <clears throat> but I think it's bridged. Um, because of the red wire. So let's just try that again. I'm gonna go ahead and go for the red wire on the other side like I usually do, just for that 
extra sense of security. Like I said, you just have to be careful when putting it on. It's not like it's bad to do it on this side. I just prefer it on this side. And then, like I said yesterday, it was just easier because it popped off a few too many times. Come on. Don't be a bugger. There we go. <coughs> Just gonna check the solder connections. I guess I could have lifted it up earlier to verify for sure. But hopefully, maybe it will actually work. You can kind of see what pins. I have the ground pin on the first, and then the uh, power pin, positive pin on the uh, on the second one. And then I uh, just taking it, routing the uh, positive wire to the side a little bit. And just popping it in where the old one was and then I uh, just take these two wires I route them to the side like that and then I'm just gonna trim off some of the extra bit I'm leaving a little bit just in case you never know if you're gonna need that extra bit you know if you accidentally don't uh, <clears throat> clip them off you know undo some of the wire and I'm just going to take some of that wire off. I mean, some of the, uh, I don't know what it's called, to be honest. Just the plastic around the wires off. Add some solder to the VIN pad and the V-ground pad. That ground is actually connected to all ground, so if that pad comes off for some reason, you can just put any other ground. <clears throat> um, but obviously, most of ground is connected or else because that's kind of the point um i'm just gonna connect up the wire although i probably should have had some solder to that wire let's do it to that one at least cool then we're just gonna solder on two of the legs so that's easier if we didn't get it right so then there's that super clean I know oh yeah wanted to should have done the uh, ground leg with some solder just makes it stick easier it's never the same so we're just gonna add a little bit of solder I'm sure all of you know how to solder by now Cool. <clears throat> then we have that. Again, like I said, connector. It's in there. Cool. Let's uh, recheck the, uh, make sure nothing's bridged, even though this time it's a lot easier to see that it wasn't bridged. Nope, no bridges. Which is good. So I'll be right back because I'm going to grab a power supply so it's easier to show that it's charging. And I found the uh, power um, <clears throat> battery pack to make sure that we can try out. But I just got my a USB. This one's one of those break off ones. But uh, we'll just try it out by uh, holding the battery in place. Uh, it's pretty hard to get these ones to short out. So I don't worry too much on... How well it goes but uh just taking it plugging it in hey not charging charging not charging charging yeah cool so you I mean that was pretty straightforward so far other than just the difficulty of soldering on those pins but uh we'll just finish it up so i like to Put a little bit of Kapton tape over the uh, over the wires, just to make sure they're held down in place. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, overall pretty easy mod. 
So we'll go ahead and just uh, put it back together now. And have fun doing that, because, you know, that's always a fun one. Uh, need to replace that D-pad still. Take that off. It's a little dirty. Guess I didn't clean it. Nope. There's a D-pad. Membrane. Okay. Got that in there. Nice and good. Now we'll just connect up the... Uh... Oop. I almost forgot the front, the, the touch screen. Can't forget that. Be a pain to put in after I get the screen on. Gammon. There we go. Cool. Now we got this one. Make sure the flap is up. Gammon. And there she goes. Cool. <clears throat> Black wire out. White wire in. There we go. Didn't pop on. Just didn't want to go. Come on. Get under. And that's it. Scrunched up. I always forget that it's easier over there. And as usual, I just route the antenna wire in between the charge port. <clears throat> Nothing really changes with that. So we'll just put the other screws back in. It's all going great. Going fantastic. I'll just try this out one more time. Hey, there, that screw fell out finally. Battery. <clears throat> I got the charger. Pretty simple. Like I said, but I'll go ahead and just button this up with you guys. Button, button, button. Okay. Power all the way up. Not power, but volume. Volume set all the way up, power down, pop in, pop pop, screw number one, screw number two, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything, screw number three, Push the other bit. <clears throat> Screw 
top. I always hate that screw. I don't know why. I just do on all the DS's. It's probably because that's the only one on the inside that's different. For one. That already makes me hate it enough because it just makes the pain having to switch back and forth constantly. For bits. Cool. Battery in. Top on. Drop the bit. All good again for that. <clears throat> and one final test to show that it's working. Just this plugs tight. There you go. With that, that's how I add the uh, USB-C in. You know, pretty easy. Well, <laughs> easy enough once you get you know the the wires on to the, the to the thing to the uh, connector. Um, doesn't really take a lot of work other than that. It's pretty standard, just swapping. Other than that, oh, I did forget. I did forget to to solder down the other uh, two legs, but it's not too big a deal. I mean. Two is good enough, but if you drop it real good, it always helps to have all four. But they're all connected anyway to that outer um, metal. So I'm going to end it off on there. Uh, maybe I'll do others if this worked out well and people liked it. Because uh, I you know, I had the Bluetooth module for the Game Boy Color. I know everybody just loves doing more of these things. And I do mine slightly different with the uh, iPhone speakers since they're really loud compared to others. So, always fun. All right, peace out. Hope you liked it. Hope I wasn't rambling too much.